Okay, I'm back and uh, we have the EMP20 here plugged in. I have the parallel port connected over here. <clears throat> um, and we have our, our module here, just to kind of show. It's pretty easy to get these modules in. So if we were going to do 16-bit uh, um, EEPROMs, we would put it in here. We're doing 8-bit, going like this. And you just, just kind of like, almost like a memory um, stick for a computer. So, and then you just turn it on. I have a power supply hooked up to it. I think it's, um, what, you need like two and a half amps, uh, 12 volts AC or 12 volt DC or something like that. Um, it's, it'll tell you there, but you can see the little red light there. So let me kill the light there. Let's see here if we can get most of this on the screen. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to go to uh, CD to uh, no. Where are we at? EMP 20. And then we just type in EMP 20. Now this version is 4.17. I think the the last version they made was 4.18. Um, and I might post a link to where you could get that. Anyway, to, if Google 4.18 EMP20 and it'll probably come up. But there's not a lot of places that where you can download the code anymore. All right, so what are we going to do? So if, let's do, a, okay, um, I hit enter and then it communicated over the par parallel port to the EMP20. And so this is the, the general user interface, um, you know, program, verify the device is erased. Um, go to the buffer editor, etc. So what, are the, what we want to do is we want to select our device. And now this is kind of what I don't like a little bit about um, the DOS software for this is that I can't just type in 2732. See, if I type in 27, I go to number 27. I can't just type in a 2732. We're actually going to... What is it? What's the chip that we're going to program? An MBM 27256. So MBM, I can't remember, is that Mitsubishi? That's the other thing is like you don't if you don't know what the acronym is, um, you know you can't choose the right chip. You have to know that MBM. Which, crap. Good thing I didn't short anything out. Um, <laughs> you have to kind of know that uh, if I can get that on there can I zoom in there we go you have to know that that MBM um, means Mitsubishi I guess or something or Fujitsu actually I think it's a Fujitsu chip not not uh, Mitsubishi right so you kind of you can't just type it in you have you have to know the uh, vendor. So Fujitsu hit enter 27256 and I will confirm that a little bit right now uh oh we're out of focus there we go Let's see you can hopefully it, this is alright All right, sorry about that. This is Jam Burglar's mix playing in the background anyway. Figured I'd have something if you can hear it. Maybe not. Um, well, that's interesting. Programming voltage to 12.54. Um, 27.256. I think the other one was 21 volts, if I'm not mistaken, right? Let's go back into our ROM Max. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so the chip that we had was MBM 27256 had a 21 volt 
VPP, 6 volts, 1 millisecond pulse width, and it's a Fujitsu chip. So let's go back. Let's escape, exit, whatever. Select device. It was definitely Fujitsu, right? So, you, and it was a 27256. Yeah, definitely, definitely interesting here. I'm curious if this is going to actually program because it says it's a 12.5 volts. Now, I haven't looked up the spec sheet on this but already we have a difference of what EE tools with the ROM Max said and this one. Now it does say up here it's a one millisecond pulse width um, so that's right and this 3x means that to complete the programming I guess it pulses three times that 3x at the end there is how um, it knows that it's done programming I think that address that address on the uh, chip so um, but let's put the chip in. And this is kind of interesting here, right? This is not a 27C. I would think something with 12.5 volts VPP would be a 27C chip. So this does not make sense to me, but we'll, we'll try it. So first thing we have to do is figure out how to do our buffer editor. And we want to autofill no, actually, let's blank check it first. Let's do uh, number two. Verifying the device is erased. Now look how long this is taking to verify the device is blank um, compared to the, the uh, ROM Max with the ISA card. And so it did say it was verify was successful, um, but that took a lot longer, right? And if we want to read the device in the buffer, basically it's going to take just as long to read it as it is to verify it's erased. So with the parallel port, you get a little bit more flexibility as far as like, you know, I guess taking it somewhere with you, I guess. Um, but it definitely takes a little bit longer. And is there, how do I do it? What's the checksum? Did it give me a checksum? I don't even see an option for checksum here. Again, I haven't messed with this enough to actually like really, you know, be master of it or anything like that. Um, but buffer editor, I don't see a chance. Now we can autofill. Starting address is zero, zero, zero. Ending address is... Um, seven, F, 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 I think, right? And we're gonna fill with all zeros. Well, that didn't work. All right, so let's do uh, Alt F zero zero zero. And it's gonna be zero 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 seven F F F. Why didn't that work? F. Start at zero zero zero. Ending address. Okay, I, mean, I guess it did. I don't know why the buffer editor is showing you is showing you more. So maybe that did work.
Yeah, I guess the buffer is just bigger than what the chip is. Interesting. Okay, well, we did that. Um, I wish there would, was a checksum. How can I get my checksum? We're going to program it. So I'm not timing this. Maybe I should time this with my phone. Or we'll know. Actually, I'll film the whole thing. So I guess we'll know based off of the number of seconds of video. But definitely, a, you know, t it's going to take a while here. But I have to let it run. Sorry. <laughs> Boring uh, time right here to film. Just uh, fill this up here. We'll crank some Jam Burglars tunes. So yeah, all, basically, I mean, I don't see a checksum. I can obviously read the help. I'll figure that out, um, you know, off camera and then come back to it. But that's, uh, the software is definitely, I would say, a, I like it a little bit less than the EE tools just because you didn't see the fact that the, what the chip manufacturer was. You kind of had to already know that MBM means Fuji, Fujitsu. Um, it is programming it at 12.5 volts, which is kind of interesting. Um, seems like it's working. That definitely is, is interesting, for sure. I don't know how that's working. I'll look up the, the data sheet on this chip as well to see which one's right. And... But yeah, definitely a long time that's it's taken to program this thing. The other thing is, I think... Um, with these, I don't know, I haven't figured it out yet, but I don't think you can go in and edit these specs here. So it does say Q. Maybe I could go in there and modify them. Let me, I'll try that. I haven't tried that yet. But to go in and actually manually modify these programming voltages. Okay, now it's verifying. It says it's successful, so that's good. So that's how long it took. Um, again, I don't think I saw a checksum. If I hit Shift R, R, no, Alt R. Oh, there we go. Nice. I didn't see this before, so I guess. You could, we could have gone to uh, 21 volts like that right there. Interesting. All right, I'll be right okay, back. Okay, so I did check the data sheet, and so this is a, a plus mark for the EMP devices. 12.5 volts is the correct voltage. Um, I'm gonna go back and look at the ROM max here in a second, but um, I could have swore it said 21 volts, and I didn't check the data sheet. So sometimes you, so it's smart to you know, you're kind of trusting that they programmed it correctly. The nice thing is, is we could have come in here and we, I mean, or we can come in here and actually manually change that, which I also like, um, because maybe they did have it wrong and we could do that. The other thing is for the device checksum, it does show it right here. I didn't notice it before. You could do, you can um, check the, but the checksum of the, whatever's in the um, buffer and the checksum of, um, of the device itself and that is what you should see there is zero 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 because we filled it with all zeros um, and you see the buffer offset from zero 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 to zero seven ff and that's correct and everything so 
Um, the only thing you can't change here is it's grayed out is this verify voltage, which is good. Um, now we could manually, I guess, adjust the buffer size here, but we don't need to, um, which is nice. And so I think that's all I wanted to show on, on this one here. Um, we verified it, it, you know, programmed it correctly. And I mean, the menu is, is pretty simple. Um, but let's check this volt heat. So we can go, I mean, look at the ranges you have here from, you know, five volts to 12 to 12.5, 21. That's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It looks like. Nope, because then you could go there's six. That's six, seven, 13.5. That's eight different voltages. 15 volts is, you know, that's another one, 16.5. So there's, a, there's definitely a lot more voltage capability or different voltages that you can do here. Um, and then on the VCC side, which is important, we got five, um, six volts. Do we have five and a half? No, we do have some low voltage um, options here. So we have 3.3. So this is a you know better than the Romax as far as going low voltage. Um, you could probably probably gives you a little bit more options as far as chips that you can read and program. But there's no oh there's a 5.5. So you can do a 5.5 volts, and it looks like it's tied kind of you know to each other there. So um, anyway. That is the EMP20. Um, I definitely like this this one. I mean, it has the 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 dip um, zero insert the uh, zero force insertion socket. I think this is 48 pins, so more than plenty. And you can get adapters like this. You know, these clamshell things um, to program. PLCC chips and stuff so you can put these adapters in like this and it works out pretty good and and you have different modules actually let me show that real quick I'll show some of the modules so it comes with like usually you can get them with these something like this right here and let's see if you can see this so you have, you know, like a zero two module for different kinds of chips, and the zero three. I think the zero, the zero one, the zero two, zero three, and now this one does do um, pals and and uh, gals. I think there you go. Right, at least it does. Yeah, there's gals right there, and then pals right there so this does do the pals and gals but it does not do the EMP 20 does not do proms you can't do proms here's another one this is uh oh that's the same one zero three I don't have a zero four I have a zero eight so you get you know different modules that you put in there and then I have a zero nine and a and a zero seven so I don't have a five and a six. So the full set of these, I think brand new, costs like 250 bucks. You almost, on eBay, you almost never see these like with a full set um, advertised. All right, so I think that's it, guys, um, for the EMP20. I'll be back and we'll do the EMP30 um, with the DOS program the same way.